What's good, YouTube? Welcome to the first episode of Marshall's World. In today's episode, we're gonna have a special guest, my grandfather. He's been around this world for a long, long time. And it's good as millennials to get this aspect to see what he's been done, what he's been doing, and how he's been doing things. Mm -hmm. So stay tuned on the first episode. <laughs> Hanging in there, no. hanging there. Ain't good? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm great. I'm great. Feeling good. good. Oh, Enjoying. Enjoy this pie. Enjoying the uh, the holidays. Enjoying the family. Right, right. So, right. introduce yourself. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, on my holiday. And uh, I've been around a long time in that uh, group where Experienced a lot in the past, uh, raised up in that time where people of color didn't have a whole bunch of stuff going their way which they had to accept whatever uh, the leaders at that time, folks was, uh, was putting out, that's what we had to accept. And uh, life was a little rough, but I endured a lot. I'm still here, I'm proud of it able to share a lot of different things that happened back in in, 19, you know, in the 40s. I was born in 1948, and so during that time, you know, black people was, right. didn't have a lot of opportunities. We couldn't do things that we wanted to do. Uh, so, uh, so to expound more on that, knowing that you was born in 1948, since what you experienced now, to what's going on now, because I can't relate to I'm a, I'm well, a millennial. Well, during, during, uh, during that time in 1948, I said, uh, during that time, uh, people now have access to a whole lot of stuff. They can enjoy what's here available. Well, back in our day, we couldn't even go into a restaurant and sit down and enjoy our food inside. We had to order ours from the outside. We had to go around to the side of a building, and, and uh, even though we had to pay for it, but we were served on the outside. We couldn't go in and sit down with, with, with the other folks. We couldn't do that. So that wasn't allowed. So how does it make you feel when you hear millennials my age say that we have it hard and we don't even know what that even feels like? Well, uh, you know, it's rough, man. It's rough. It was rough for me. But I can appreciate the change because it's been a great change since, you know, since my time and when I was born. Uh, during my time, I couldn't even use a water fountain. The water fountain that was right out there in view, in view you couldn't go up and use it because it said on it, for whites, whites only. And if you want to drink water, you got to go to the side of the building, water that wasn't filtered. Uh, even bathrooms, bathrooms, you couldn't go to the bathroom that was there. Uh, close to, you had to go on the outside and use a bathroom that uh, maybe they cleaned it and maybe they didn't. So it, it's just been a, a great change. There's a lot of things we just wouldn't, we wasn't able to do. Uh, even going to school, uh, schools was not mixed like it is now. We went to a, uh, a school that was all black. It was all black. The books that we used was books that was handed down to us once they was used by the, by the white folks. They, they, they would send them to the black schools and then we, we had to use those books that had already been used for a, a number of years. Right. To backtrack on your previous statement, being only black and black and have the different ethnicities around you. I can experience when we actually moved to Greenville, North Carolina, uh, Greenville, actually, Indiana, if you remember, and being the only black kid in the whole school. Wow, yes. And a lot of them, a lot of the white people didn't even know black people existed until that time period. And I remember we was outside playing in the snow and there was a little kid and his mom, she's like, mom, there goes brown people. Oh, wow. And she was shocked because yeah. we all just started laughing because yeah. he was never exposed to that. So I can, that was my taste to me. I was like, wow. Wow. Yeah, matter of fact, you guys, uh, you know, me, me and my my grandkids, you guys were very fortunate to to have parents that was that was young enough to give you all the opportunities to be able to go to the live in a neighborhood and to go to a school that you could get a good education and the, the books and, and and whatever you had in that school, you could you could learn from those because they was at the top. 
you always is a blessed, you are very blessed to have, like I said, young parents, uh, educated parents, and gave y'all the opportunity to live in mixed neighborhoods. So. Yeah, the only drawdown to that was having to move everywhere. I mean, with your dad working in corporate America like that, we was moving every three to three to two years. It was like, I couldn't settle no more. I think once we moved to Charlotte, North Carolina, that's where we kind of settled down. So we've been in North Carolina for the longest until, you know, all of us graduated college. They're like, peace out. We're going to Florida. So they left us there. But that was that was unique, just moving to many different places and seeing the different culture shocks. And I, I'm thankful for that because I want to have so many friends of different ethnic groups because of that. My parents taking us out of the hood in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Yeah. And they be like, I want a better life for you guys. And my dad and mom grind. So see the fruits of the labor. You see it now. Well, we uh, we as uh, you know, as parents and grandparents, we always want uh, things better for our kids than ourselves. Uh, so that's the reason why a lot of uh, people like Martin Luther King. When Martin Luther King came along uh, in the, in the fifties, in the forties, in the in the early sixties, when he made uh, you know he he made change. Even though he gave his life for it, but he made change. He he wanted to he, he wanted to represent all people, people of color, along with white people that uh, that wasn't rich, and you know, and that was the thing. A lot of people just don't know the history, but by you guys being the age that you are now and, and educated, you all didn't experience that. But you but but even your parents didn't experience that. But for me, as a grandparent, I experienced all of that. All of that being called boy versus your name or, or Sam, they, they call you whatever you want, and you had to say yes, sir, and no, sir, and yes, ma'am, even to people much younger than you are, and you couldn't do anything about it. See, that messed me up because I got pride. So he, <laughs> he's talking to me because I understood that was just messed me up. So during that time period, what is the one experience you think kind of shaped and molded your mindset saying, I need to move this type of way? Wow. Uh, once, uh, once I uh, I grew up and had an opportunity to leave home, I had to leave there because I was I, I couldn't deal with being from Georgia the way I was I was right. born and raised in Georgia, and I, I got to the point where I was so disgusted of you know not being able to. And, and my parents, I, I can't blame my parents because they, they did the best they, they knew how. Uh, not owning anything had to be a sharecropper. Uh, but once I got away from that, then I realized that, okay, use what my mother taught us and my father taught us to be respectful, uh, treat people like you wish to be treated. But the experience of growing up in the 40s and the 50s and the early 60s taught me a lot. Uh, and the way things is today, man, I tell you what, uh, any young person that, that, you know, you can be anything that you want to be, it's up to you. And the ones that don't take advantage of that, oh my gosh, you have no idea what you're doing to yourself. Educate yourself. Um, there's a lot of good stuff out there you can do. All you got to be is motivated. And you got opportunities. I would say now, our opportunity is a lot better because we didn't have the mindset that only thing you can do is just go to work or go to school and get a paying job. Where now people in my generation, they understand I don't need a boss. I'm going to be my own boss. So you see more entrepreneurships. You see more people get LLCs and then using them, they're using their college degree to go work for that type of person to fund their side hustle on the side. And I see a lot of that now. How did you guys experience that during the time that you was growing up? Or was that the mindset back then? Well, you know something, uh, we <laughs> we didn't have the knowledge. We didn't have no one to tell us. If anything, in order to keep you down, they had to stop you. From, you know, they didn't want you to to educate yourself or learn anything. You just didn't have the help that you need needed in order to make yourself better. So, so we just had to be a strong-minded individual, believe and trust in God, and just. Uh, you know, just to try to get ourselves out of the situation that we was in as time went along. Right. So it's just, I mean, it's, man, it's, 
Right. So growing up during that time period, what was your music like? What was your go-to jam to impress the lady that you had liked at that time period <laughs> or, or whatnot? Man, listen, this music that's going on today, back in my time, it, it, you was lucky to have a radio. <laughs> you have a radio that, that, <laughs> played, radio. that, that played hill, hillbilly music. And then you had, and then uh, in Alabama and Carolina and stuff, you had these the spiritual singers, these, these, these spiritual singers that, that, that was great. That was great because those guys made good music. Uh, they experienced a lot of stuff traveling around. They couldn't, they wasn't able to get into a lot of the big areas to, so they could make money. So they had to limit themselves to the small little clubs in the, in the different uh, cities. But uh, hey, so what was your what was your jam back in that time? That when you went to the little pop clubs and man, I wasn't allowed to go to you know what I didn't go to a club. Until probably some uh, in 1967, uh, 68. Uh, I remember uh, the Elks Club in Fort Lauderdale was out there on Sunrise Boulevard. <laughs> the Dale. <laughs> <laughs> I went to that one a couple of times, and really because I wasn't, never was a drink and a smoker. I used to stand on the sideline and and, and watch guys act crazy, a little foolish, and you know. But I I was raised up. A different way so that was I was kind of out of my league there I was out of my area but I wanted to kind of see what was going on but I, I never that's one reason right. why I could never fit in with the regular guy right so I know you see the comment with the presidential um, selections going on and you've lived through some times with some presidents so what was who who would you consider the best president for you at that time and which one was the least president oh wow uh, you know during my time um, that I can remember. Well, first of all, before the, the president that represented blacks and peoples of color, uh, we weren't even allowed to vote. The voting thing was something that you couldn't do. Uh, it was it was in um, 1968, 1970 before people really. You know, because all you know, you just wasn't allowed. I don't know why they, they kept us on the feet, under their feet for so long. And then I realized later on that if the, the leaders of these United States kept at that time the black people that they could work in the fields and all that stuff, they it was better for them because if they didn't, we would be educated. And it would change things for them. Yeah, it point. would. It, it would. It would change things for them. So, uh, it was a long. It was a long. It was a long time before we could break away. And then, the thing about it, because you held down so long, you had to pick yourself up and realize, you know, it's something better for us. It's something oh, better yeah, for exactly. us. Exactly. And I, I might not, you know, be that person to do that. But when I start having my children, I want to make things better for my kids. So then that's what I think that's the motivation part right there to start you to, uh, you know, look around and say, okay, what kind of not let's, let's find information, information and anybody that you could uh, attach yourself to. For me, as a young person, when I started working with J.C. Penney's, I was, uh, I, uh, I met these, uh, a German guy that had, that was in, in the service. And he was the one that explained to me what paying into the system meant. And he said, Palmer, you might not understand what all this is right now. He said, but believe me, if you, you work this job, this, the stuff that they are taking out, let them do it. He said, because if you live long enough, this gonna be this gonna benefit you in the end. And I really didn't understand exactly what the whole that was about until later on. Because I didn't have any other black person that I knew that I knew myself, I'm sure it was some out there that could act that would explain to me what all this meant. Right. But thank God, I, you know, I had made friends. And then when I started for GCP, it was on like, if I remember, an Oakland Park Boulevard over there on US 1 and Oakland Park, I think it was only maybe in the whole store, it wasn't a morning about from four to six black people working at that whole store at the time. That's crazy. At the whole store. And then during that time, uh, I worked 40. 40 hours a week, and I got paid $52 a week. Plus, once they took out, I think I ended up with $47. But again, 
during that time, things was cheap. Gas prices was like 19 cents a gallon, 17, 18, 19 cents a gallon. Oh, time out, time out. 19 cents yeah, a gallon. I remember that you could get high test gas and you could put $7 worth of gas in your car and it would fill it up to the top. I mean, my mom, my mom had the Suzuki. The gas, the cheapest I've seen gas was a dollar. Wow. Since I've been okay, observed. but see the difference. It was a dollar, and that was cheap to you because that's all you knew. That's all I knew. Well, for me, 16 cents a gallon, 17 cents a gallon, I think it was like 19 cents a gallon. You could get the high test gas for that. Man, you could put six dollars worth of gas in your car and ride for two weeks. <laughs> Don't tell me that. I'll be two all weeks. over this world. <laughs> I'll be traveling all over this world. Two weeks. That cheap. The main one of the main stores that we had. Uh, a neighborhood store, what they call the Star Service Station. And I'm, I'm telling you, wow. Yeah. We, uh, I remember uh, your grandmother, my uh, my first wife, Miss, Miss Gerald Holiday there. Her and I had went to the store during that time, and we spent $15 for grocery, and we had a whole cart full of groceries for $15. Let me walk in the store now with $15. Oh, man. I ain't walking yeah. out nothing oh. with a candy bar. That's it. That's it. <laughs> you know. So yeah, it, it's, it's, it's been a big change. I've seen the change, I've, I've lived the change. And I think the hardest thing for us as a, as a people, as older people is to accept change and we had to accept change. Right, okay. We didn't have no choice. Good, so in closing, knowing that you're a granddad and you have grandbabies, what would be a good point that you would want us to know moving forward in our lives as we continue to, this journey we call life. Just, just realize that there's a system and you have to stay within the system. You gotta work within the system. That's the way the government work. But my thing would be continue to educate yourself. Continue to, to invest because you could be anything you wanna be. Don't let nobody change that. You can be anything you wanna be. You just, just have to stay in the system work within the system and never let nobody discourage you because you are you are as good as the next person they are no better than you are facts no better facts well granddad i appreciate you on the you first episode of marshall's world right. hey, we'll, we'll do this real. again i'm glad you came up here all right enjoy it I'm you know enjoying. yeah we ate all this good food we still i'm yeah. still eating dessert drinking more water um we're gonna have to do this i'm about to come to west palm beats uh, so we can get <laughs> On to the shooting range to do some. Oh, some sound, shooting. sound like a win. So, sound like a, hey, yeah, Go ahead and do that. All right. All right. Appreciate you.